Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Nilu has been the subject of much scrutiny since she was revealed with very niche mechanics. Now that I've had time to put her dance moves to the test, I've gained a better idea of where she stands, how good she is, and some of her important considerations. In this guide, I'll be talking about her kit, constellations, artifact builds, weapon options, and team comps, and I'll also be reviewing her overall pros and cons. There's a lot to discuss, so let's just get into it. Hello, I'm Nilu from Zubair Theater. We have one dance scheduled for today, and it's about to start. Keep your eyes peeled. Nilu is a Hydro unit that specializes in Bloom reactions with her Hydro Applicator kit and conditional passive talent that buffs Bloom reactions. There are also some playstyles outside of a Bloom team that Nilu can function in which I'll discuss too, but her best use is undoubtedly as a Bloomer. Due to her limited teammates though, Nilu has more potential waiting to be unlocked. Let's go through her talents to see how she works. Nilu's normal attack talent is a 3-hit combo. As pretty as it is to look at, this talent only affects her physical damage and thus can be ignored to let you spend resources on other important things. Moving on to the more important stuff, her elemental skill is what gives her kit its use variety. Casting it makes her enter into the pirouette state, after which you can either press her normal attack or skill to do hydro-infused attacks. You can press them up to 3 times, and what's unique is that depending on whether the third attack is a normal attack or skill, she will enter a different state. If you end with a normal attack, she goes into the sword dance state and gains hydro-infused normal attacks for 8 seconds. She can do 3-hit combos during this duration, and the third hit unleashes a hydro wave that moves forward. Note that these hydro-infused normal attacks are considered elemental skill damage, which means that effects that buff normal attack damage will not do anything for her sword dance. She has a standard ICD for these attacks, and they're quite single target oriented. Although, she can hit multiple enemies, but only if they're grouped really really closely together or if they're in a straight line for her hydro wave to hit them. If you switch her out early, it will end the sword dance state, so this wants you to adopt an on-field playstyle with Nilu. I also discovered that while she can still proc Singcho's rain swords or Yelan's dice attacks, she does not proc Beidou's chain lightning. Basically, a ride and repeat. This reduces her synergy with Beidou if you were thinking of pairing them. On the other hand, if your last dance step is a skill, you'll enter the whirling step state. This makes you gain the tranquility effect, which is basically a hydro area of effect aura. It ticks every half second as you can see on screen, but it has an ICD of applying hydro only every 2 seconds, and it lasts for up to 12 seconds. These ticks don't deal any damage though, so it's really only for hydro application. Unlike the sword dance, where it ends when Nilu switches out, the tranquility aura will stay on even when she switched out. So if she takes more of an off-field role, this is the effect you should trigger. Comparing these two states, you can see the distinction between their use. It depends on your Nilu's playstyle and the combat scenario. I personally like this aspect as it gives her a bit more gameplay variety. And to quickly mention her particle generation, from my test she generates one or two particles when you hit an enemy upon activating her skill. Then each each pirouette step generates one particle on hit, hence she can generate a total of 4 to 5 particles per skill combo. Moving on to her burst, it's very simple. It deals two instances of hydro damage. The first one is upon casting, and it's dealt in a large AoE around her. Any enemy hit gets applied with a lingering Eon, which will make the affected enemy take a second instance of hydro damage afterwards. Both hits have hydro application, and the damage multipliers of these hits are quite large, though in a Bloom team, it's the hydro application that's more valuable. All in all, even if these abilities are geared for Nilu's Bloom teams, the fact that they are a good source of Hydra application for triggering reactions does make her have some potential for other non-Bloom teams. Now let's talk about her passive talents, starting with her A1 passive that unlocks her full niche potential. Upon finishing her skill dance steps, she applies the Golden Chalice Bounty effect on your entire team, but this triggers only if your team is composed of Dendro and Hydro units. Triggering it gives a 100 EM buff when your character is hit by Dendro damage, which counts the self damage from Dendro cores. More importantly, it replaces the Dendro cores any team member generates into more powerful Bountiful cores. These explode faster, have larger AoEs, and cannot be triggered into Hyperbloom or Burgeon, so they are guaranteed to explode as Bloom damage. In relation to that, her A4 passive makes every 1000 HP past 30,000 of her max HP increase the Bountiful core damage by 9%. This can reach a maximum of 400%, which will take almost 75k max HP. Note that this increase 
increases the damage of bountiful cores any party member generates. This is why building HP on Nilu benefits your entire team's bloom damage versus building EM on her which only increases her own bloom damage. It's her passives that really push her into a pure bloom team that's restricted by dendro and hydro only members. While there are teams that can ignore these effects, they won't tap into Nilu's full potential. But more on that later. For her talent priority, simply leave her normal attack talent alone and start with leveling up her skill, followed by her burst. Anyway, how about I show a new dance to you? Moving on to Nilu's constellations, she's perfectly fine without them, whether used in her niche or outside of it. These are quality of life or damage improvements that she doesn't need to be good for her intended niche use. With C1, her Luminous Illusion damage, which is the third hit of her sword dance attacks, gets a damage increase, which is beneficial for her on-field playstyle. Then her Tranquility Aura gets a 6 second duration extension, which adds 3 more potential Hydro applications and gives it an easily achievable 100% upgrade time. C2 gives her Golden Chalice Bounty State a Hydro and Dendro Resistance Shred effect by easily triggering the stated conditions. It's a straightforward and significant damage increase, so if you ever plan to get Nilu constellations, I'd say this is the best stopping point. C3 increases her burst level by 3. C4 gives her an energy refunding mechanic after completing her skill dance steps, and it also gives a 50% damage bonus to her burst. This helps lower her ER needs and is again a damage increase. C5 increases her skill level by 3. And finally, C6 gives her a mechanic where her crit stats are increased based on her HP stat. It would take 50k HP to get the maximum possible crit buff which is very doable with Nilu. All in all, these constellations just make her do more damage with some quality of life improvements to her energy and hydro uptime. Again, you really don't need these and I've been impressed enough with how she is at C0. First get into position like this, then move like that, yep, that's it. With Nilu's artifact and weapon builds, there are two templates to follow. You'll either build her for her bloom playstyle or into a build that's focused more on being a traditional Hydro DPS. My recommendation is to build her for blooms as it's the most optimal and easiest route, but her non-bloom builds are still an option which I'll touch on too. Starting with her bloom build, the artifact main stats are very straightforward. You simply want HP or ER sands, an HP goblet, and an HP circlet. Regarding her ER needs, you can do it two ways. Either you target her to burst every rotation, which means building around 160-200% to ER. But you can just avoid that trouble and burst every other rotation, which lowers her ER needs to about 100-120%. to While bursting on cooldown definitely has benefits for hydro damage and application, you don't have to be overly concerned with optimizing that as she'll still trigger a lot of blooms regardless, and that can make you less worried about ER needs. For her substats, get ER stats if necessary to hit your desired ER. Then and look for HP followed by EM substats. Crit substats do help with her hydro damage, but they are lower priority since your focus is to increase bloom damage. As for her artifact sets, the easy and efficient way to build her is with two piece set combos. The two piece tenacity is definitely a priority for its HP bonus. Then, for the other two piece set bonus, my next recommendation is between the two piece emblem or two piece EM sets. Then, if you already have good pieces of the two piece Heart of Depth or two piece Noblesse, they are still possible options to at least increase hydro damage or burst damage. Two-piece combos can be really good since they have more substat flexibility. However, if you happen to have a four-piece Gilded Dreams with excellent substats, it's not a bad choice as it aims to increase Nilu's own bloom damage. Nilu doesn't have a best-in-slot set or combo that's really miles ahead of other combos, and having great substats can swing the favor into one set combo over the other, so I'd recommend you to farm whichever is most resin efficient for you right Right now and account for the substat quality of your pieces. Now for her hydro damage build which definitely takes more investment than her bloom artifacts. With her main stats, your main priority is HP or ER sands. Then it's basically a hydro damage goblet and crit circlet. The substats you want are crit, HP, and ER. If you're using her in a vaporized team, it'll be nice to get some EM rolls to boost her vape damage as well. For her ER needs, I do recommend to make her burst reliably since it contains her largest multipliers which can be turned into huge nuke damage. Again, 160-200% is a common range you can aim for. As for her artifact sets, you can go again for more accessible two-piece combos of Heart of Depth, Tenacity, Emblem, Noblesse, or an EM set. Choose the pieces with the best substats. 
For four-piece sets, she has more options now compared to her bloom build. The four-piece emblem will be great especially for a burst nuke build and to help address her energy needs. The four-piece noblesse sacrifices a bit of personal damage to give your team an attack buff, which can be situationally better depending on the team. The four-piece blizzard strayer is a very niche option in a freeze team so you can focus on stacking HP and crit damage. I have two notes on these specific artifacts in case you were wondering. The four-piece tenacity will only be procced by her pirouette attacks and her sword dance hydro-infused attacks. It cannot be procced by the tranquility aura's hydro application. This limits her potential to use tenacity as an off-field team attack buffer. Second, there can be cases of very niche uses of Lava Walker for a vape team and Thunder Soother for a taser team, but these are too inefficient and niche to recommend farming for. Relaxing days like this are nice. Let's take it easy. When it comes to weapon options, Nilu's HP scaling damage makes attack an irrelevant stat. Her sword dance attacks are also considered elemental skill damage, so effects that buff normal attacks have no use on her. Weapons with ER can also be more valuable if you're building her to burst every rotation and are still lacking ER stats from your artifacts. Keep these points in mind when choosing Nilu's weapon. There are three possible 3 star options for Nilu. First is the Dark Iron Sword, which will mainly be for the EM stat, particularly on Bloom Team. Second is the Skyrider Sword which gives a high ER stat. The movement speed bonus from its passive is something for helping her mobility. The third option is the Harbinger of Dawn for the crit stats it offers. This is a bit tricky to recommend due to the 90% HP condition, but in non-bloom teams where you can really guarantee Nilo stays above 90% HP, the crit stats are very good. Moving on to the 4 stars, there are a lot of great free to play or gacha options. Let's start with the ER weapons. The Favonia Sword is an excellent weapon thanks thanks to its ER and battery utility. And since Nilu will be comped with many burst reliant units, this helps a lot with addressing your team's energy needs. The Festering Desire, if you are able to get it, synergizes pretty well with her since it buffs her skill attacks with damage bonus and crit rate. The Sacrificial Sword has interesting synergy with her. Thanks to the cooldown reset, you can have both her Tranquility Aura and Sword Dance active if you execute them right after another. If you're mainly using her as an on-field DPS, then this lets you have more sword dance uptime. It also doubles her particle generation. The sapwood blade is an option as an ER craftable weapon and it also drops a leaf that gives an EM buff upon being picked up. However, since the leaf can be inconvenient to get, and if you have any of the previously mentioned ER weapons anyway, this is a lower recommendation. Now let's see the 4-star EM options. Sifo's Moonlight is the latest 4-star gacha sword, and it's actually pretty great on her since it helps with both her EM and ER, while giving a minor ER team buff too. If you happen to get this, then it's a pretty good option. Though, trying to snipe a 4-star on the weapon banner is very risky. Meanwhile, the Iron Sting is a good free-to-play choice for her bloom or reaction teams with its EM stat and small elemental damage bonus buff. Now for her 5 star options. The key of Kajni's suit is her best weapon. Aside from giving an insanely high HP stat, it converts Nilu's HP into EM for her and for the team. The Jade Cutter is great thanks to its insanely high crit rate and its HP% percent passive. It's more recommended for her raw hydro damage playstyle though. If you happen to have them, the Haran and Misplitter Reforged are your next alternatives without Jade Cutter and you want to build her for hydro damage. You can't utilize their full passives but they are stats sticks nonetheless. The Freedom Sworn is the only 5 star EM option. However, note that its team buff passive affects normal attacks and attack, which is going to be very underutilized in a Bloom team. Finally, the Skyward Blade's main benefit is its ER. Though the 4 star ER weapons are arguably preferable since they have better passive sets synergize with her. I want to use my performances to show the beauty of art to more people. Now let's go to her teams. As I've mentioned, her strong niche team is a Hydro Dendro Bloom team, which I'll discuss in detail. She also has some alternatives, which I'll also mention afterwards. For her Bloom team, you're going to be restricted to using only Hydro and Dendro units. You won't get her Golden Chalice effect by inserting a third element, even as a flex slot. Doing that removes what makes her special, so follow the Hydro and Dendro condition to unlock her potential. There's no rule that says how many Dendro and Hydro units have to be on the team, so it can 
can be 3 used to 1 or vice versa. The benefit of doing so is that whatever the lone element is, you can likely guarantee that it will be the trigger. However, that means that the solo elemental application won't be fast enough to keep up with generating as many cores as possible. There are compelling reasons to make it 2 and 2. It helps with batterying fellow dendro or hydro units. It unlocks both hydro and dendro resonance which are equally useful in her bloom team. And having consistent sources for both elements lets you generate more blooms. A healer is highly recommended to heal yourself from the self-damaging mechanic of bloom. For that, we have two dedicated hydro healers, Kokomi and Barbara. They can be built as traditional HP healers for more healing and or with some EM for higher bloom damage. They also have slow off-field hydro application, making it more likely that the bloom reaction is hydro on dendro, which allows for more core generation. Then for your dendro units, the dendro traveler and Kole are your most convenient options as off-field supports and bloom setups or triggers. Technically, Tignari can be slotted in as a dendro unit, the difference being that he'll take more on-field time. Our upcoming dendro Archon Nahida might be a very good teammate for Nilu, so we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully other Hydro or Dendro characters will appear in the future to give her bloom teams more variety. Nilu's bloom teams can present some challenges to control which teammate will trigger their share of blooms. That's why Nilu's bloom damage buff is team-wide, so that despite the difficulty of controlling bloom ownership, everyone can still do more bloom damage than they normally would. If you're really min-maxing damage, then you'll want to be more conscious of the order of abilities, and ideally, the highest EM units trigger the most blooms. But I didn't bother optimizing my Dendro units EM stats on my Nilu team tests, and it still worked very, very well. Making sure her teammates have enough ER, though, helps a lot in maintaining the uptime of each unit's elemental application. Bloom damage scales on character level 2, so you lose a lot of base bloom damage by leaving them at 80. Ideally, most, if not all, characters will be level 90 if they aren't yet. This can get expensive, though, so it's up to your dedication and resources. Nilu does have alternative team options. She's not using her full potential there, but she works to some extent. And she's not an upgrade to other Hydro units, but that shouldn't be a surprise. For one, she can still be the Hydro unit in Burgeon, Hyper Bloom, or Quick Bloom teams. She won't activate her Golden Chalice effect since it doesn't fulfill the team conditions, so she'll be a Hydro applicator to generate regular Dendro cores. She also works in a Freeze team, either as an on-field or off-field Hydro applicator. Note again that her off-field Tranquility Aura only applies wet but doesn't deal damage. For her vape team, she can either be the enabler or trigger for vaporize. You'd really want Shangling's pyro application, which is fast enough to help Nilu forward vaporize. Her burst damage in particular is valuable to vaporize, since it's her largest multiplier, it has a huge AoE, and it can double vaporize. Her Luminous Illusion hit also has the highest multiplier which you'll ideally want to vaporize. I found that due to her Sword Dance's standard ICD, if your combo does not get interrupted, that hit will indeed consistently trigger vaporize. She can also be in a mono hydro team, especially as a driver for Singcho and Yelan. The fourth slot is ideally an Animo Vivi or Zhongli or Albedo with Archaic Petra. You can consider a Taser team, but just remember she can't proc Beto's Chain Lightning, who's often a staple in Taser teams. Still, it's a possible team comp, just far from being as good as other Taser teams. I'm done warming up. I can do even better now. To wrap up this video, let me share some observations and considerations from my experience with Nilu. A big question many people will wonder is how good she is in her niche, and it's a relief that her Bloom team is actually strong. This is Bloom's peak potential, and it's at least one promising niche that interested players can explore or uninterested players can easily ignore. Outside of her Bloom team, she's a side grade or downgrade compared to most other Hydro alternatives. I do think she's a very free-to-play friendly character. Farming HP main stats is easier and she works very well with various two-piece combos. She has very accessible and good weapon options going for her too. And most importantly, her default bloom team is composed of free characters, Dendro Traveler, Kole, and Barbara. Even though there are 5-star alternatives now and in the future, you nonetheless have a free bloom team to work with already. Though she is banking on getting more teammates in the future that will synergize with her. There are also some roles that can still be filled in or consolidated 
within our bloom teams, like a dedicated crowd controller or defensive unit that's either hydro or dendro. Though they're not necessary, they can make our bloom teams more convenient to play with. It all goes back to how our current teammate options are still quite limited for Nilu's bloom niche, and I don't think it's a good idea to pull for characters based on their future potential. So the safest route is to wait for her rerun and see if she gets more team building options. But if you're set on pulling Nilu, then you've got a team ready to go and we can hope there's more room for her to bloom in the future. Anyway, that's going to be all for this guide and review. I am very interested to know your thoughts on Nilu down in the comments, especially if you managed to try her out already. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!